Hey y'all, good evening. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, this is Tanetta coming to you all with the video this evening. I'm actually making some mini pizzas for me and my partner. Um, they're going to be veggie, but Matt's going to have pineapple on it as well. So but I just want to welcome y'all to the video. And I'm actually going to be talking about um, Mother's Day for those of us who don't have mothers as well. I do a video similar to, uh, such as this um, just about every year. Well, for the past few years, I can't say every year, um, but at least the past two to three years, I've done I've done a video similar to this, talking about the grieving process, talking about us without mothers, and celebrating this time of year and that kind of thing. So I just want to, of course, like I said, come on and cook with you all, talk to you all about that as well, and um, share some story. And if you if somebody pops on, of course, you can share some story with me as well, and let me know about what your mom and what's going on, what y'all have planned as well, or if you've lost your mom and what's going on with that as well. So I'm just to let you know, like I said, I'm making homemade pizzas. Um, there were going to be calzones at first. I don't think this dough is big enough to make a calzone, so I'm just going to make two mini pizzas. Um, it's going to have, um, I have what, onions right here in front of me, mushrooms, jalapenos, bell peppers, um, pineapple. I have shred some shredded cheese, um, Parmesan cheese, and I, of course, like the tomato sauce. I have that as well. And I already have the dough inside. This little bowl has been brewing for about 30 minutes is what it's well. It said five minutes, but I put it on there for like 30 minutes. And this is the crust that I use. I forgot where I got this crust from. I really don't know. Whatever it is, you just, just you, you can use any crust that you want. Um, if you already have a crust that's already put together, then use that. Um, I chose to, um, to, um, to have the one that had the water in it. Only because I had them in the closet for months. And <laughs> I, didn't, I don't want them to expire, so I just go ahead and try to make something with it. Because y'all, let me tell you, you always have, I have stuff in the closet all the time in the pantry. And it's like expired and all this stuff going on. I don't know. I, I doubt that I'm the only one that, that does that. But but like I said, definitely I want to make sure that I use these things before they went bad. So that's why I'm actually cooking with the pizza dough. Because I actually got two. So I'll do another pizza night or something uh, when his daughter comes over. Because we can make some shrimp pizzas or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I just didn't want it to go bad, y'all. I get tired of wasting food and throwing stuff in the trash. I don't know about y'all, but I, it happens to me all the time, it seems like. But I ain't gonna say all the time. It ain't every single day. But at least once a week or a few times a month, I say that. And like I said, I know I'm not the only one that tries to cook what they got so it won't go bad. And so y'all yeah, won't be wasting food and stuff like that, because I do not like wasting food as much as I can. That drives me crazy because I know there's people in other countries who don't have the food that we have here. So I'm like, nah, I got to do something with this. Uh oh, and let me go ahead. I'm actually about to try to lay down this crust on this thing over here on this pan that I have already put out, and I have it sprayed with the, of course, the olive oil spray. I, uh, I believe it was olive oil spray. Um, shoot. <laughs> And this dough is kind of sticky too, y'all. But here's the dough. Like I said, I made this about an uh, close, well, about 45 minutes ago. So I'm just going to put, um, tear this in half and press this out as much as I can to make us two individual pizzas. What I'm going to do, I hope that it presses out enough. Because like I said, I, my plan was to make calzones. I made calzones. If you don't know what calzones are, calzones are um, like... Um, a big pizza stuff roll, I guess you can say. Instead of the pizza dough being flat, it's actually rolled up and it has all the fillings and cheese and sauce inside. That's what a calzone is, y'all. And I've made many of those before. And y'all, this pizza dough. And hey, Rachel, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're doing well. And happy pre-Mother's Day to you. I hope you're doing well. I know you got two boys over there, too. And hey, um, Jerome, I hope you're doing well. And I can't press the button, y'all, because I'm pressing down this dough, so. <laughs> so I will press the button away, but y'all, I'll have to do it later. But like I said, I'm uh, making um, homemade veggie pizzas, and mine's going to have pineapple on it as well. But I'm also, of course, we all know that Mother's Day is coming up tomorrow. Um, I don't have my mom anymore. She passed away back in um, November 1998, the semester before I left college, actually, or graduated from college. Um, I know, of course, in the beginning, it was very, very hard, of course, having to go through that process, not having a mom anymore. Um, she was just starting to get her life together and that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, here comes cancer and here comes mom, I guess I put it that way. So, and thank you, Lisa, for tuning in as well. So, like I said, I know there's many others who have lost their mom as well, not just to cancer, but to other things. It could be COVID. It could be car accidents. I know there's all kind of folks in my timeline has had all types of things. Um, going on, I guess I put it that way with their family and their mom and that and, and loss and that kind of thing as well. 
And like I say, I know around this time, um, it used to be very, very hard for me to, of course, get through this time. I used to have attitudes with folks and um, sometimes crying and that kind of thing. And like I said, I've gotten to a point now where I'm okay, I guess I put it that way. Um, that's been 1998, one of my 43, I guess like 20, Lord, 22, 24, almost 24, I guess, years ago. So, so like I said, it's taken me that long. I know some others, it may not take that long. For me, it did. Um... But like I said, for, for others, it may not take that long. But it didn't take the whole 24 years. But I mean, it took about at least 20, I guess I would say that. I can say, I, I, I can definitely say that. But like I said, I know there are some out there, um, actually friends of my friends list, who I know um, that their mom had passed recently or in the past few years, the last five years, I guess I can say. There's actually several. And like I said, I know how the holidays come around. We're not in our best moods, I guess I put it that way. Don't I mean I know we can't stop all the stuff on TV about this Mother's Day coming up. Get flowers, get candy, get all this stuff. And for us, we're like, okay, who cares? That's not really anything that we want to think about. I guess I put it that way. At least that's how I used to feel. I'm like, okay, I don't want to hear about this and hear about the other mothers and they're out there having fun and I couldn't have fun with my mom because she's gone. That kind of thing. And like I said, that's how I used to feel all the time. And like I said, now I'm I'm okay with it. Um, I won't be going to the cemetery tomorrow because I know usually on Mother's Day is usually packed. But I will be going next Saturday, actually, um, to, of course, uh, visit with my mom and that kind of thing. And my dad because they're in the same burial plot. So I'll see them both when I go out there next Saturday. And I can share some of that with y'all next weekend as well if you want. That, that's fine with me. I, don't think, I think I've shared pictures in the past. Um, but I'll definitely be going out there next Saturday. Uh oh to, of course, um, say hello and visit the gravesite, make sure everything's going okay with, with the gravesite, cut the grass. Well, I usually have, like, my little scissors to cut the grass if I need, that kind of thing, too. Even though they're at Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery, they do all this stuff anyway. But usually I just take it anyway, so just in case. But like I said, that's just me, but I know there's others who have not gotten to that point and who are still struggling and, um, of course, miss their mom. Of course, it may have happened recently or within the last five years, and it's definitely something hard to go through. I'm not saying that it's easy at all. It's definitely hard. Like I said, I was young. I was, what, 21, going on 22 when my mom passed. Was it 22? Let me see. 21 or 22 when my mom had passed away. So, like I said, that was definitely um, something that was, I mean, well, I knew she had cancer and stuff like that, of course, yes. But, of course, um, knowing that that's going to occur, I guess I put it that way, you just don't want to face those kind of things. And like I said, by me still being young, I was hoping that she'd be there to see my graduation, all that kind of stuff. And like I said, I'm sure many of you were hoping the same as far as your mom being there for you to see this and see that. But how I look at it now, I can't tell you how to feel about it, but I know I look at it now is that she sees everything that I'm doing and she's still a part of me. I guess I can say that. Um, I know the things that I'm doing now, I'm sure she's very proud of, I guess I can say that. Actually, her and my dad, so I'm pretty sure of that. And like I said, I know that may be um, difficult for you to understand now, put it that way, but just but just, but just, just know at some point, um, at some year, at some time, you'll get to that point. It may not be right now. I know I have gotten to that point, but some, some others may have as well. But like I said, definitely just know that you're not alone. I know I'm not the only one who cares about the Mother's Day and it's all this commercialized stuff, all this stuff going on, but I love, I actually love to see the people, of course, celebrating with their, with their mom. I do love that because I know I've had clients and um, different people, friends, family, that kind of thing, who may have not gotten along with their mom, not even visited with their mom, could care less about their mom, haven't spoken to their mom in years, and I'm like, how in the world can you do that if she's here on earth, if she's still living? I wish I could talk to my mother. I don't have a mother to talk to. And like I said, I know there are some of us, like I said, who do take that for granted. Um, I can't speak for all of them. I have no idea who they are, but um, I know some. I put it that way. And like I said, that's just something that at some point, hopefully, they'll get over. Um, try to let go whatever this, um, that situation was in order for them to heal and, of course, forgive each other. That's the only thing I can say about that. Because like I said, I know I see that every year that some people do take their moms for granted. Don't go visit, don't call, don't do anything, could care less. I ain't spoke to my mother in five years, ten years, that kind of thing. And I'm going to say if you're one of those people, please try to reach out to your mom, especially if she's still here on this earth and you haven't spoken to her. People like us who have lost their mom for whatever reason that's not here, we have no way to talk to our mother except for, of course, in our prayers at the cemetery. Uh, we have an urn, of course, with the ashes, that kind of thing. Definitely make sure that you're, of course, 
communicating with your mom. Like I said, for us, that's like, okay, I'm like, oh my God, if I had a mother, what the hell can I do with my mom? I guess if I had one, and you have one and you're not even utilizing her, I guess I put it that way. So like I said, definitely try to reach out to your mom. I know sometimes families go through things, but like I said, for us who are hurting and us who are um, trying to grieve through the, the process of Mother's Day and missing our mom and that kind of thing, that is definitely hard to see. Now, I know that may not change anybody's mind. I don't know. But I always say I hope that it change at least one. I guess I put it that way. And if you need help walking through that process, I'm a coach. So let me know that as well. I, and that's what I deal with relationships a lot. So let me know. But like I said, for those of us who are struggling through this day, just know that you're not alone. Like I said, I've lost my mom too. And I know there's many others out there who have. And you can definitely feel free to share this video if you know somebody who needs the, the support. Because like I said, I know sometimes we feel, at least I felt as well, that I was, of course, alone and didn't have anybody to talk to and nobody knew how I felt because they still had their mom and all that kind of stuff. And just in case y'all wondering what I'm, I'm trying to press out this dough, I ain't even start putting the vegetables on the pizza yet. I'm trying to stretch out the dough just in case you're wondering what the world is she doing. But I'm just trying to stretch the dough out to get some even pieces. As you all can see, I got it stretched out as much as I can. I got two little thin pizzas. But like I said, definitely there's um, definitely reach out to those people. I know they may say, oh, I'm fine, and that kind of thing. Just keep in mind that I used to say the same thing all the time, too. And I know doggone well I wasn't fine. I guess I put it that way. Like I said, those years, of course, I was crying and upset and wondering why God took my mom. What did she ever do? And that, I wish she wasn't perfect at all. No, nobody's perfect. But like I said, I was still hurting during those times, wondering why she was taken away. You know, I'm, I'm sure everybody who's lost a parent, lost a mom, feel that way as well, or feel sim a similar way as well. Guess I can say that. Like I said, it's definitely just, just to know that there's others out here who, of course, um, share your same kind of story about losing a mom and that kind of thing, know that you can call on for support. Like I said, that's definitely a good feeling. I know back when my mom passed away, I don't think we even had internet. Well, I think internet was just coming into play back in 1998. I know that's a long time ago, but I think that I think it was just like I think Facebook was still for like the college students because I know I had a Facebook account back then as well, I believe. Or was it? I can't remember. Lord, it was somewhere along in the area or a prototype of Facebook or something. I know it was MySpace out too, but but like I said, we didn't have all the connected social media that we have now to, of course, be able to get online and. Um, talk to others across the whole entire world and know that there are some out there who may have faced the same thing that we faced with losing our mom, that kind of thing. It's it's very good to have that kind of support. Whether you know these people or not is how I look at it. I know some folks like, you can't just talk to anybody and this kind of thing. When you need support sometimes, sometimes the best person to talk to is somebody you don't even know. It's how I've, I, I've always dealt with things sometimes. Sometimes there has been the, the best conversations that I've had that developed into some, into some awesome friendships as well. I can't tell you what to do, but like I said, it's definitely a whole wide, what it's called, worldwide web of people out there that you can definitely talk to, um, especially if you're hurting, you need support. Um, there are support groups, of course, good Lord, on Facebook. My hands are greasy, y'all, from that pizza, though. <laughs> but there are support groups on Facebook as well that I know that speaks to grieving, and um, it should be some for grie grieving mothers and fathers as well, y'all, so... Just in case I know Father's Day is next month. Lord have mercy. What in the world? Y'all, my hands were so greasy from this um from the pizza dough. I can't even get the pizza through the thing open. Lord. Okay, let me try this over. Let me try this over, y'all. All right. Good Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh my goodness. So crazy. Okay, let me try this over. Let me see if I can get this. Because if not, we ain't going to have a damn pizza sauce. So I got to get it open. Actually, I have another one. Let me use the other one. I know I got another one, too. But Lord. Okay. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So crazy. Let me see if this will open. Dang. What in the world? Okay, there we go. I'm going to say, Lord Jesus. Now we got to make the pizza without no sauce. All right. There we go. <laughs> so crazy. Lord have mercy. But like I said, we definitely have the whole World Wide Web to, of course, um, to talk to people, chat with people, get to know people who are going through the same struggles that we're going through. Hey, Sharitha, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. Janice and Chantel, thank you all for being here as well. I just washed my hands. Rebecca, Lisa, Jerome, and Rachel, thank you all for being here as well. I'm trying to push the wave button to y'all. There we go. I guess I couldn't do it at first. My hands were so greasy. So I hope y'all are doing well this, um, I guess this afternoon, this evening. 
And I'm actually making some homemade pizzas, y'all. Um, it's going to be veggies. I already have some onions chopped up, jalapenos, bell peppers, mushrooms, pineapple. On mags, I love pineapple. And, of course, the cheese. Um, that's uh, Yeah, that, that's all. So I'm making this one for my partner and one for myself. So he didn't want the pineapple. He's a sore little loser. I love pineapple on my pizza, <laughs> but I know everybody don't like the same thing either. He, I, actually, I have made him a pizza before with pineapple. I don't know. He, I guess he liked it okay, but I love it, y'all. That's my favorite, actually. I can eat that all, well, not all day, but I could actually eat it all day long. <laughs> but like I said, we definitely have the whole World Wide Web out there. And I don't know if any of you are going through a hard time this Mother's Day um, because you lost your mom. If so, I definitely will keep you in my prayers. Um, just to let you all know that I, of course, support you. I'm there with you. I've been through the same as well, so I understand where you're at. No matter how many years have passed, even though mine has been about 24, I think 24 years, 23, since 1998, y'all. I think it's 24 years, or going on 24 years, actually. Mm -mm. So like I said, I definitely know how it can be. I just hope that y'all are doing okay, because I know a lot of stuff has been going on in this world as well. People shooting up stuff, people, all this stuff going on. And I posted the other day on Instagram, and I think I may have said, well, I don't think I said anything on Facebook, but yes, I did. But I was wondering what is going on, because it seems like a lot of people are shooting up stuff, all this violence is going on. I'm like, what in the heck is, I'm either it's mental illness, or I don't know what it is, lack of problem solving, I'm not sure what it is. But people out here seem like they need a lot more help than what's, what's been projected, I guess I put it that way. And I can tell, I know folks are still anxious because of Corona and all this kind of stuff too, and I'm just like, come on, people. I was having a um, conversation with somebody on Instagram yesterday about that, and I'm just like, what is going on? We need some more support, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't really know, actually. Some folks I know are just unhappy and that kind of thing, but I'm like, okay, you don't have to go shoot people up because you're unhappy. I understand you're unhappy, but find somebody to talk to. I mean, people around them, and I know I talk about relationships a lot in my relationship coaching business, and it's just like, okay, we have to know who's around us. I always say that. I don't care if it's with your partner, with your kids, with your family, friends, that kind of thing. You always have to know not just who is around us, but how they're doing around you, I guess I put it that way. If they seem like their behavior has changed or if they're getting depressed or we see them talking about they don't want to be here anymore or sounding like they want to, I don't know, go shoot up something or getting guns or that kind of thing. Definitely learn how to stop people and say you can't do this or can't do that. Don't do that. Come talk to me or something, anything. Call the police. Whatever it is you got to do, I guess I put it that way. Because I'm just like, this just makes no sense. I know I've got the topic about the, um, the, the mom and Mother's Day, but it just took me into something else just, just about all the craziness going on. I'm just sick and tired of hearing about it, to be honest. And I'm like, okay, if people around you see you depressed and see you being bullied and see all this stuff going on, why don't the hell somebody step in? That's what I don't understand. I said a few years ago in a video, I'm here in St. Louis, Missouri. We, of course, have the Metro Link or the subway, whatever you want to call it. Um, there was a video that was going around. It may have been more than four years. I don't know. Whatever it was, it was a man on, on the sub, on the uh, on the Metro League going down to the Cardinals game, the Cardinal baseball game. It was an afternoon, maybe like five or six, I guess, or I don't know, afternoon. Um, and you, these um, these guys started, like, picking on this man and started hitting on him. It was a full train ride, y'all. And nobody even tried to step in to stop these folks, say anything, stop, don't do anything. I'm just, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe it's me. I'm just like, what is going on? Which I understand some folks are, of course, scared. I understand that because some folks can have guns and things like that. But I'm like, okay, at some point, we have to learn how, I don't know, to me, at some point, we have to learn how to stand up for things at some point. I mean, I know that's the kind of person that I am, but I know everybody's not that way. Um, but I'm just like, nobody even, he was, it was a full train. People, folks were standing up and everything. Nobody even tried to interject, say, stop, man, hey, man, y'all ain't got to do this. Nothing. The man just got his ass whooped, just had to look on the damn train. I'm just like, are you serious, people? But I, I don't know. I, I just don't understand. Like I said, I know there's mental illness going around as well. I know that. I know that people are full of anxiety and that kind of thing, too. But I'm not going to blame this whole thing on Corona because I'm sure they were already having issues within Corona. There was already issues going on before Corona even hit, I guess I put it that way. Mental, I mean, yes, some mental illnesses can start with, with the uh, pandemic, or I'm, I'm assuming if you're getting anxious or 
have anxiety or that kind of thing, but most of the time those things have already been going on within you and this just amped up the process is how I see it. Like I said, I'm just like, okay, you can't blame everything on the coronavirus. I understand that, but most of the time when it comes to those, from what I've seen, mental illness and dealing with people and that kind of thing, things were happening way before now. Nobody even wanted to notice or care to notice or say anything or try to help the people from what I have seen. And I've seen that personally, actually. So I'm just like, come on now, y'all. At some point, we have to learn how to start. I mean, I know everybody always asks. Hold on, y'all. Give me one second, actually. I'm washing off some veggies. Oh, crap. There we go. This is a big old jalapeno. <laughs> big jalapeno, actually. But like I said, I know at some point, we have, we always, not always, well, I take that back. Yes, we do always. Whenever somebody's asking, how you doing, what's going on, that kind of thing. Oh, I'm fine. Oh, I'm dandy. Oh, I'm... I'm okay, or I'm too blessed to be stressed, or whatever the hell you want to say. But a lot of times, people are going through a lot of things and just masking things up. I know I've done that. I can speak for myself. I don't know about you all that's on here, but I know we always have that automatic response of, oh, I'm doing well, I'm doing fine, that kind of thing. When, when we know that we're not, we have to learn. I guess my, my business, I always say, is speak your truth. You have to learn how to start saying what's on your mind and what's going home. If not, nobody's going to be able to ever help you. If, no, if, if, if nobody knows what's going on, why you're acting the way you're acting, you have to learn how to speak up. And, I know it's hard for some people to do that. I understand that. But at some point, you have to learn step into whatever kind of feelings you're having and ask for that help and ask for that support. Like I said, that that's, I mean, you have to speak your truth on stuff. Not just sit there just dying in, in, in depression and suicidal tendencies or, or thoughts and that kind of thing. I've been there as well. And like I said, that's, that, that's nothing that you want to play with. And suicidal and homicidal since, since they're killing others, I put it that way. But all these shootings at schools and this little girl was six years, well, in the sixth grade the other day, was shooting up her school. I'm just like, are you serious? Why the hell she get the gun from? But I'm like, okay, I guess the parents or whoever's in the house is how that always seems. I mean, I'm sure she doesn't go bad one because she's too young. So, And Sierra, you said, um, yes, the world is extremely crazy and scary. So many things going on that seems out of our control. Yeah, it does. It just I mean, it seems like it is out of our control, but I know with some of these situations, that's just me speaking from knowing people, being a social worker for over 20 years, and just knowing that you can, you, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're paying attention to the folks in your household, you know when their behaviors change. You know when something don't seem right. And some of those folks, I'm sure their parents or friends or family may have known or seen that something ain't right. Something was going on, something was bothering those people before they went out there and did those shootings or whatever else it was. <laughs> But like I said, that's how I look at it. I know other people may not see it that way, but we have to start paying attention to who is around us and how they're feeling and what's going on, whether they say it or not. I'm urging you all to, of course, start speaking your truth and tell them what's going on with yourself to your closest friends and family if you can. And if not close friends or family, we have to, we have to pay attention to all those kind of things as well. Don't just let it go on because Johnny or Susan said they don't feel, I mean, they are getting depressed and they don't want to be here anymore, that kind of thing. If somebody's talking like that, interject. If you don't want to do it yourself, you can either call the police, call the behavioral health hotline, call somebody to get that person some help. So I know sometimes we don't want to get involved in a situation or scared to or don't know how. Um, but like I said, at some point we have to learn that we, some of these things can, to, in my eyes, can be stopped. I guess I put it that way. Some of them, I cannot say all of them, especially for those adults who live on their own and out here doing bad guns or doing whatever they want to do. Some of those folks, you know, we cannot stop. But for the ones who are younger in our households that we see, especially with our teenagers, see stuff going on. If you notice behavioral changes, things are going on, things are happening, interject, say something. Don't just go at them like, oh, they shouldn't be feeling this way. Everybody's going to have a down day or a down period in their life. We all know that. We have it as adults. We have to expect that our kids are going to have it as well. But we have to, of course, learn how to talk to our, our kids, our loved ones, to find out what's going on, y'all. And maybe I need to do like a small little worksheet or something. I don't know, but or a video or something about it. But, but like I said, we definitely have to learn how to how, how to interject and step in, especially if something's going on. I know, yes, like I said before, some folks are scared and that kind of thing too, but you got to, at some point, you have to open your mouth and say something. If you need help, you need support, you need help, you need support. That's all of us. Nobody's um, exempt from that, not even me. I don't care what degree we have, what degree you have, or 
what kind of school you've been to or what kind of thousands of dollars a month day you're making your business, that does not matter. When you need help and support, you need help and support. And you have got to let somebody know. Or if not, if the people around you notice that your behavior is going, I'm, I'm still urging, please do so. But if not, the people around you, they may see you having a depressed mood or something going on, they ask you what's going on, please be honest with the people. Let them know what's going on. Because you're hurting nobody but yourself, and of course you can hurt others if you're feeling homicidal, but you're, you're definitely hurting nobody but yourself. I don't, at least for me, I, I, I just don't want to see people constantly being in the same depressed mode and for years and years and years, and I, but I know there's something that, that they can also do about it as well. They may not want to do those things, or they may not know how, but like I said, there's all kind of coaches or therapists or counselors, whoever it is you, you can talk to to get things off your chest. And that's what I've seen a lot with, well, I can't say every single time, because I know sometimes there are chemical imbalances where folks do have different mental illnesses and things that they can help. But for some of the mental illnesses, yes, there are some things, mainly talking, getting things out, and speaking their mind that can, of course, help too. I guess I put it that way. Yes, there's medications and stuff like that. I know that, yes. But like I said, there's also talking therapy. You can also talk and get things out. A lot of times with all the stuff that we have built up and pent up in us, that's what's making us depressed and upset and sad and all these kind of things. We have to get to a point where we can honestly speak our truth and say stuff and not be scared to say it and, and, and speak it, I guess to put it that way. Yes, it's going to hurt folks around you, but okay, oh well, that, that's fine. The, at least the way I look at it, that's fine. If you have to get off the chest, just go ahead. At least it'll save somebody's life that day, I guess I put it that way. Especially if you were feeling suicidal, you were feeling homicidal. I guess I'd say that. Y'all may not agree, but hey, the way I look at it, if that person wants to go off or whatever they got to say just to clear their mind in order to not hurt somebody else, and I definitely agree with that. But we don't need to keep losing lives. We keep losing lives all the time. All the time. It's from, I don't even look at the news, but when I log into, on, uh, what is this thing called, Facebook or in, in Instagram, that kind of thing, I'm seeing all these doggone posts about people shot up this thing and shot up. I'm like, I tried to stop watching news because I, 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 I just hate seeing that every day. And now when I'm logging into social media, it's the same way now. I'm just like, oh, my goodness. And like I said, we definitely have to get to a point where we can, of course, try to curb some of these things. I don't know if anybody else um, has anything to, to say about that. Or if you want to, well, I don't know if you can come on. I don't know. My hands are wet now. But, but like I said, definitely, we, we definitely have to work with each other to try to, 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 I guess, to curb some of these things. Because I hate seeing that. I really do. And I know I'm not the only one. Sierra sounds like she's tired of it too. I'm just like, come on now. I hate oh turning on my phone and this kind of thing and hers is shooting again. Ten people dead or something else going on. We have we have gotta do better, y'all. I know I've got the topics of mothers. I'm gonna get back to that as well before I get off, but we have definitely got to do 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 something better than this. Really. Cause this just don't make no sense. And if y'all have some ways or tips, I guess, for anybody that may look at this video, definitely post those down below just in case, because you never know, you may help somebody. Never know. You never know. Like I said, I know I got off topic, y'all, so I'm getting back on topic, but I just had to say that, because I know that was on my mind and my heart and my spirit, so I had to say that for some reason. So somebody out there that logged on must have, must have needed to hear that. Or that was looking at this video must have must have wanted to hear that. I need to hear that. There's all types of crazy that's going on. But getting back to the moms. Um, like I said, with the moms, as far as the support online and stuff like that, the same thing with you all. I know I'm considered a strong person and that kind of thing. My friends and family, you're so strong, you're so this, you're so that. But just keep in mind that us strong people, we need support too. We're not going to probably tell you most times. I know I didn't back in the day. I had to learn how to speak that as well to let people know that I needed help that I was suffering, I was, I was upset, or whatever the word may have been for me that day. Like I said, I had to start letting people know that as well. Because I sat there and suffered in silence for many years. Upset at the world, angry at the world, all that kind of stuff. Um, hating God and hating everybody else because of all the stuff that I seen or witnessed or my parents died or whatever it was. And I was just upset at everybody. Like I said, including God as well. That's why I didn't believe in him for a long time. I put it that way. And like I said, I'm just like, okay, at some point we have to learn that when we're silent, when we're quiet, we're hurting nobody but ourselves. 
Of course, the folks around us may not know, or some of them may, do, may know what's going on and why, 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 why we're looking upset, why we're being upset, why we're hating this, why we're hating that. And like I said, for us, we have to realize that at some point, you're going, well, not just for me, but anybody else out there that's listening, going through a grieving process, yes, it's definitely very hard, but I know I say this with, with, with love to all of you. At some point, you do have to resume living your life. I'm not saying it's going to be today, that kind of thing. But you do have to resume, of course, your, your, your daily activities, going back to work, going back to school, whatever it was you, you were doing before your, your, um, your mom passed away or your loved one passed away. I know for me, I was still in, I was actually in college. There was a semester before I was going to graduate because she passed away in November um, 1998. And I graduated in um, May 1999, actually. Um, so like I said, I definitely... Um, yeah, I mean, I still went to school, I guess I put it that way as well. Of course, my teachers knew, knew what was going on. Of course, I took off like a few days, I think a week or so, or something. I forgot how long it was. But I still was able to get my homework done, schoolwork turned in, that kind of thing, a little bit afterwards. And then, of course, let me finish it before the end of the semester. But, of course, I know some teachers may not care, some may not know what's going on, and you may not want to tell them. But let's keep in mind that your life will, of course, pick back up to where it was and, of course, what kind of where it was. In order to get you to move forward in your life, just 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 keep that in mind. I know we think that sometimes, oh, my life is going to end. Is it's not going to be? I'm not going to be able to live without my parent or my mom. That kind of thing. I thought the same thing as well. And I know it's definitely very hard. Um, but like I said, at some point you will realize that whenever you are gotten to that process and gotten to that point in your life, then of course you will. And you'll know that your mother is still, of course, looking down on you and, of course, proud of what you're doing or whatever your faith is and whatever it says about those in the afterlife. I'm not sure what your faith is, and I should have said that at first. But um, I believe, of course, my, my mother is still with me, in, I guess, in, in, in a soulful form, I guess you can say. One of my um, one of my guides is, is, is how I look at it. But like I said, some of you all may not believe that or care about those kind of things. I may not even have a religion or anything or spirituality or anything else. So whatever kind of form you think your mother's still in, I guess I put it that way and around you, um, definitely believe so. But like I said, at some point we do have to know that no matter how long the process takes, how many years it takes, that eventually you'll get, you'll get back to living your life to some kind of capacity, I put it that way. And you will, of course, smile again, I put it that way as well. I know I thought that I wasn't going to be, because I was always happy, go lucky, and I'm still like that, of course, no matter what's going on, but of course, I did lose all my happiness, of course, of, around that time, and wasn't able to smile and laugh like I was, I mean, I did, but it was, of course, hard for me to do, and most days, I was just pressing through it, just to make those around me think I was still fine and normal, I guess I put it that way, which I knew I was hurting inside, but like I said, that was something that I tried to do in order to let people know that I was okay still, that kind of thing. And, that was, and like I said, that was back when I was, what, 21, 22 years old. I, I didn't know everything that I knew now. But like I said, I know now that I should have been telling them that, of course, I was either suicidal, because at some points I was suicidal. I wasn't, I, I was unhappy. I hate that the, 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 the my mom passed away and that she was taken from me and all those kind of things. Like I said, that is exactly the way I felt. And I know some of you all may feel that way as well. That's why I'm saying that. It's definitely something hard to go through and definitely something hard to of course get past and move on with your life and that kind of thing at some point you will but i can't say get past something that you actually heal from because it's actually a healing process it's not just getting past i know i say that a lot but it's definitely a healing process and a healing process in your own time um, and in your own way i guess i'd say that as well definitely in your own way i can't tell I me mean, i can give you some steps or somebody else can give you some steps but we can't run your life and tell you how to heal and that kind of thing you have to do what's best for you and how you, and, and with, with whatever kind of steps you feel like doing. Yes, there's the grieving process. I think it's four or five steps. But, of course, after that, I mean, of course, it's a long process. And it could take you years. But, of course, getting through things, just to let you all know how I got through a lot of the stuff I was going through. Um, like I said, with my mother passing and that kind of thing and my father and other folks in the family. I, of course, that's why I'm cooking. I, of course, was uh, cooked. I baked. I, as you all know, I, well, some of you all may know I love baking, making stuff, creating stuff. Uh, we didn't have videos back in the 1998s when, for social media. We, we, we barely even had a social media. But like I said, I was definitely one of the ones who was, of course, always crafty, always making something to get in. I, I colored, I, of course, read books, I wrote poetry. I did all kind of stuff. Like I said, in order for me to take my mind off of things, in order for me to calm down, to bring some peace into my world, I guess I put it that way. 
Because, of course, it will be times where you feel just things just in chaotic order. You, you feel that you're just like, oh, my God, and just ready to scream. Like I said, you definitely will get to that point, I'm sure. But you have to realize that you're going to have to figure out something that you can do, something, some, some kind of activity, whether it's walking, in nature, you're, you, you like to run or whatever it is, exercising. For me, like I said, it was the cooking and baking and stuff like that. Um, actually, it was the walking and stuff like that, too, because, I mean, I was exercising as well. But, but like I said, those are the main things that stood out for me was creating stuff and, of course, the, um, which, which included the food and cooking the bacon and the writing. Like I said, those things definitely um, stood out for me, and that's, and that's definitely what I did. Of course, I was exercising back then, playing handball and all kind of stuff at the gym, too. But And that was good, of course, for your body, of course, to, to, I guess, to keep you fit. And it helps you, of course, boost your um, boost your happiness and that kind of thing as well. Exercise is very, very useful. So if that's what you want to do or feel that you can do, I guess especially if you have the body to do so and you're not um, having a sore back or unable to do so or hurting, that kind of thing, definitely go ahead and do that, y'all. Like I said, whatever it is to help you get your mind off stuff, some people like to shop, shopping therapy. Some people like to um, work well. I guess build and work on cars. I know folks like that actually, like building like old school cars and stuff like that. Some folks like to go just walking down the street window shopping. It just depends on what you want to do. Some folks like to plant gardens and plant flowers and take care of something, watch something else grow or get more involved like in their kids' lives or family's lives, that kind of thing. So, of course, pass the time. Just do whatever you feel that's good for you is what I would suggest. But you'll have to do something. Like I said, I would say don't sit there in silence and hurting and not knowing how to get, I mean, not knowing how to heal from things. Like I said, the healing process, I know folks make it seem like it's so difficult, or not, not difficult, but I guess so, I guess the word I'm trying to find is mysterious, that it's just like a, a mystery type thing that you go through, and that there are some steps that nobody seems to know about, and that kind of thing. Like I said, the healing process does not have to be intricate as, at, at all. It can be, like I said, some of those creative things that you want to do, some of those exercise things that you want to do. Um, that, like I said, for me, that's it helped me heal, heal a lot. Um, I'm one, as you all may, well, some of you all here may know, I was sharing my entire journey on video that was back in 2017, 18, 19 as well. And I guess as I go on now, I'm doing, I'm, I'm still doing the same thing now. And like I said, I did talk about a lot of the lessons that I've learned in my life. Everybody may not want to do that. I don't, I don't recommend everybody do that at all, especially if you're not one who likes to be on video or want to talk on video or you're nervous, please do not do so. I did that because, that was, like I said, that was helping me heal and process and get things out. Because I kept everything bottled up for years and years and years. And it's like, okay, at some point this has got to be released. And that's why I'm telling you at some point it will be released, just to let you all know that. You may not see it today, I'm sure, but at some point it will be, be rele released. And you're going to feel so much better, I can tell you that. Once all those feelings and all the, um, all the thoughts and all that kind of stuff and all the... Um, the main, well, actually, I ain't gonna say all the, well, it was thoughts too, but, but like I said, the main thing that I realized, um, was actually forgiveness, um, cause I know, like I said, my mom and dad were, well, I guess we're talking about mothers right now, my mom wasn't perfect, and of course, I was regretting all the times that we did not spend together, all the things that we could have done, but I felt, like I said, the God took her away from me, I was only, what, 21, 22 years old, and I didn't understand why, and of course, I was hating God by that time anyway, like I said, that was the process I went through. Yes, I found God again and that kind of thing and understand as I'm older now, 44, almost 45 now, that sometimes that is going to happen. Our loved ones are going to be taken from us. Um, there may not be a reason, but believing in God and that kind of thing, I believe there's always a reason. For whatever reason, there's always a reason. I guess I can say that. But like I said, that's definitely something that, that you will definitely think about as you go through this process. And like I said, I know I rejected God through the whole process, but for those who are out there who um, have lost their mom and they, of course, pray, meditate, that kind of thing, definitely please do so as well. That will definitely help you through your process as well, y'all. Just keep that in mind. That will definitely help you. Like I said, I didn't do it at all because I didn't believe in, in God back then. I was so mad. He, took, he did this. He took this person away from me. And I don't have anybody, all this kind of stuff. I was all upset. Um, but like I said, now I know that... Um, there's nothing I could have done, I guess, to save my mom or save anybody, actually. And like I said, I know there was there was some kind of reason, I'm sure. I haven't um, actually sat down and thought about the reason, but the only reason, well, take the back, the only reason I can think of was that her time here on Earth 
was served. That's it. Like I said, that was in my situation. There may have been other things that I thought about right now. That's the only one that I can think about. Um, but like I said, definitely her time here on earth was served. And whatever kind of, um, um, what is it called? Mission that God had her on when she was created, that's what she served and that's what she did. I don't know for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, but like I said, that's the things that, of course, pop in my head now. To let me know that it wasn't, I mean, there wasn't anything that I can do. It was nobody's fault, that kind of thing. But just to make myself have peace with the situation, I guess I put it that way. Like I said, that, that, that's how I think about things. Everybody else may not feel that way, may not think that way. But at some point, we have to think about those things. And, of course, um, like I said, learn a process to forgive and learn a process to, of course, move on with our lives as well. The best we can, I guess I can say that. The best we can, because like I said, sometimes it's very difficult. I know I went through some difficult periods, but like I said, I'm sure you are as well. But you'll realize that at some point it'll get a lot, a, a little bit easier as the years go on. That's the best thing I can tell you. I guess I put it that way as well. As the years go on, it will get a little bit easier day by day, year by year, month by month. Let's keep in mind, I'm sure your mother loved you, whether you all had disagreements or not. I'm sure she still loved you as well. I'm sure she's still thinking about you as well. Like I said, for me, I always say she's always in my heart and she's always looking down on me, that kind of thing. That's definitely the way that I feel about your mom, my mom, and whoever else's mother's out there lost. I guess I put it that way. A lot of my life has been lost. And like I said, I, I was upset for a long time. Now, I know I said on video back a few years ago, um, when I first started telling my story, my journey, that kind of thing, some of you all may not be able to relate to, relate to what I'm about to say, and some of y'all may be like, oh, my God, you felt that way? What did you do? What happened? Um, but I know I said in, in the video back then as well, when I was growing up, my mother and father, of course, were both on drugs, that kind of thing. And I, of course, hated them for that. I used to always say, I hate y'all. I hope y'all die, all that kind of stuff. Because I was very upset because they were using the drugs. It wasn't that I wanted them going, I put it that way. And like I said, definitely, I, um, like I said, that was something that always stuck with me. Because I'm like, did I cause this? Did I cause this? For many a years, I'm like, did I cause her death? Did I say that? Because I told her. I don't, I don't love her anymore. I hated her, but it wasn't her. Like I said, I, I, I finally had to come to grips with that and, of course, face that when I was trying to learn my forgiveness process, um, forgive my mom for the things that, that, of course, had happened in the past, and, of course, to, in order to move forward with my life and heal from those situations. And like I said, I know I'm not that powerful at all. I'm not a God to, of course, cause death on anyone unless I'm physically kill, killing someone, and that definitely was not the case. But like I said, my main thing and how I had to heal from this process, but one of the ways I had to heal as well, was to make sure that I talk about all the things that I regretted doing or not doing with, with my mom and all the time that we, of course, sometimes waste and lose and lost because we're upset at our parents or we're mad at our mother because of whatever kind of behavior that, 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 um, that they were exhibiting or whatever the case may be. Like I said, that was, that was part of my process. And I know some people out there may be going through that right now as well. Like I said, that's just forgiveness. Um, you will get through it. I, I'm here to tell you that you will definitely get through it. I know it's hard. Like I said, I know because that was one of the things I had to go through in order to officially, of course, um, speak the truth about it. Like I said, I did that on video, actually. That was several years ago. It should be on YouTube somewhere. But like I said, it was definitely several years ago. And I felt so relieved when I talked about the things that I, that I thought, the things that I didn't like that she did. But, of course, in the end, I still love my mom, regardless of what we or what she went through, what I went through, what I may not have liked, the, the behaviors that she may have had. Like I said, that was definitely something that I had to face as well. And you may be in that part of your journey, I don't know. But just keep in mind that at some point you may experience something like that, I don't know. I know I did, and I know others who have as well. Everybody may not go through that part of the process. I'm just here to tell you all that, but like I said, I know I did. And that was something that, of course, helped, that helped me to heal, and, and of course, like I said, to forgive my mom. I know that with different drug issues and things like that, it's not always, I mean, yes, I felt, of course, neglected and that kind of thing. No, actually, this is, <laughs> y'all know what I did? I forgot to buy some more um, cheese that, um, that I can shred up. So, so I'm actually doing old school, going back to make sure I'm cutting up, well, breaking up some little slices of cheese. The only other cheese I had was extra sharp cheddar and mustard cheese. So I'm... <laughs> I'm breaking these things in slices to put on top of these pizzas. So I'm like, Lord, I know it's ghetto, but whatever. I guess cheese is cheese. I can't shred this stuff, so because it's like in little slices. 
But that's what I'm doing, Jerome. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering. So I know you were asking. But that is what I'm doing because I ran out of the, um, the, the shredded cheese. Don't ask. I went to the store yesterday. Didn't even buy none. I don't know. Have no idea. That's all right. <laughs> that is definitely all right. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to taste the same. I've never had Munster on my pizza, but I'm sure it's going to be good, actually. I'm very sure it's going to be good, so I can't wait to try it, actually. <laughs> but like I said, just, just to think about you all's healing process, just know that going through forgiveness and talking about forgiveness to your parents or whatever happened, especially if you and your mom, you all weren't on good terms when she passed away, that kind of thing. She may not be here for you to talk to her now. What I did, I went to the cemetery and I spent, um, I don't know how, I couldn't even tell you how long. I have no idea. Um, I guess a few hours after talking to my mom, of course, cried, that kind of thing as well, just to get those things off my chest and let her know that I, of course, loved her. I mean, it wasn't that I hated her or anything that um, she told me or anything like that. No, it was I hated the things that she did, which, which was the drug usage and stand with my dad. Um, of course, because he was very abusive towards her, actually. I hated that she did that, but like I said, there was nothing. I have no idea what was going through her mind at the time. I have no idea. Um, but like I said, definitely um, seeing all that stuff growing up, and like I said, I had to just let her know that I forgive her for those things. We have no idea sometimes, y'all, how our parents are raised, what they went through. I don't. I mean, I, I know some folks may, may sit down, talk to their parents to, to figure out what they went through, how they were raised, and doing all those kind of things will help you understand how they raised you and why they do some of the things that they do with you. Like I um, said, you a lot of I, I would and if if your parent is still here, I would definitely advise for you to do something like that one day. Take your mom, your dad, whoever it is, out to lunch or dinner, of course, and ask them about their life. Let them know that it's going to be a heavy topic. Don't don't just bring it on them and of course scare them half of death. But of course, just let them know that you're wanting to know. I guess talk to them about their life. And hopefully they'll be honest with you and open with you about what they suffered. It could could have been child abuse. It could have been molestation. could have been rape. It could have been other domestic violence in the household, child abuse, foster care, anything, drug usage. It could be a number of things. But like I said, in order for us to understand how our parents, of course, behave when they're raising us, we have to, of course, ask those questions. And that was something that I never found out from either one of my parents, actually. How they were raised. Well, I mean, I heard some stories. But other than that, I do not know. I, whether they're molested or anything happened or whether they were beaten by their parents or whether there was any kind of um, abandonment issues. I know for some of our parents, they have the same issues that we went through. A lot of times they, of course, raise us doing the similar things that they know and, that, and, and that's how their parents raise them. So like I said, we definitely have to make sure that we're asking those questions. So if your parents are still alive, make sure that you're asking them that, finding out how they were raised and then you'll put two and two together how they're raising you is how they're raised you, m most of the time. Sometimes, of course, our parents are more advanced and learn things. And, of course, like we do personal development now and stuff like that. And they're up and up on that. But for some, they weren't. Especially if they, they, if they came from an environment that that, that that wasn't even talked about. Mine, it definitely wasn't. That I know of, it wasn't. So, But like I said, definitely, if your mother's still here, father's still here, ask them, ask them about those things. Ask them how they were raised so that you can feel better with knowing what... Um, why they treat you and your siblings, if you have siblings, the way that they do, and why they act the way that they act. And like I said, for those um, people who, who parents have passed away like mine, what I did was, like I said, I just wrote out stuff, wrote in my journal, um, of course, like about like some of the things that I regret, not some of them, all the things I regretted, actually, and not doing with my mom, um, a lot of the things that I regret saying or all that kind of stuff, like I said, that was, my, that was part of my process. And I definitely had to go through that in order to free myself, I guess I put it that way, from thinking that things were my fault or I caused this or that this shouldn't have happened. I hated God for it and he did this, God did that. When it, I'm sure God did do these things, but like I said, definitely it was part of the process for whatever reason. And the way I look at it, it was probably part of the process to help me on my journey so that I can tell y'all about this story. I'm sure that that's another thing, I guess, that like I said, I definitely wrote in my journal too. And like I said, I know a lot of times we don't think about things like that. But sometimes people pass on in our lives in order for us to write the next chapter of ours so that we can have a story to, of course, tell y'all, to speak about, to inspire somebody about, and to educate somebody about. Like I said, that's, that's definitely something. I mean, I know if, if your parent, did, I guess, just recently passing is new to you, this is going to probably be like, oh, my God, why did she say that, that kind of thing. But if, you've, um, but if it's been like years and that kind of thing, you're um, 
been healing and going through your process and that kind of thing, you understand exactly what I'm saying. Sometimes people that come into our life, parents included, they're a part of our lives for a reason. And sometimes it's to help us become who we are at times. And like I said, sometimes they are taken from us, is from what I believe, um, to help us write that next story in our life. And like I said, I wouldn't be on here telling y'all this, telling y'all anything about this, and try to help inspire somebody and help somebody else get through their process if that wasn't the case. So like I said, I'm definitely sure of that. So y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and get my butt off here. I just hope that you all enjoyed the video today, and thank you, Author Janelle, for tuning in as well. Um, again, thank you, Rachel, Jerome, Lisa, Rebecca, Jan um, Janice, Chantel, Sharitha, Sierra. Um, Jerome, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you all are doing okay. And like I said, for those pair, uh, for those young, uh, I guess people out there, whether you're listening to this or if you share this with someone and they're listening right now, just know that you are you you definitely have support. If you, are, of course, are one of the ones who have lost their mom for whatever reason, and you need somebody to speak to, I I'll be here. I mean, you can of course reach out to me. There's others in your family, friends, circle that you may be able to reach out to as well. Are people in support in, in these support groups that's online that you can reach out to for support and to talk to strangers? Sometimes that is the best people to talk to actually, in order to get things off your chest, in order to heal and go through your situation and to grieve as well. So let's keep that in mind, y'all. We have the whole W www world wide web to like like i said to of course talk to people to connect with people and to of course share our stories with people so like i said i hope that you all enjoyed the video and help you all think if some of you all have lost your mom or trying to get through that process and that kind of thing and are struggling or depressed or that kind of thing as well i hope there's something that i said in this video that's going to push you forward and help you in your situation like i said if you need somebody to talk to of course i'm a coach as well and a social worker as well so if you want to reach out definitely let me know just send me a message on messenger that is fine so with that i want to say thank you all again for watching me make this pizza even though y'all didn't see the whole entire process they're actually now in the oven now and it should take about 15 minutes to cook, I would assume, 10, 15 minutes or something like that. But I want to say thank you all for tuning in, and everybody have a great rest of your Saturday, and have a good evening, y'all. And just know that I'm, of course, praying for you all. I will be praying for y'all tonight. For those who have lost their mom and are having a hard time dealing with this day, like I said, I will definitely be saying a prayer for y'all tonight in order to get through this. So so with that, take care, take care, y'all. Have a good evening.